present our challenges so I will take a engine and a engine and a engine so the boss are nice but in the engine so yes I see what's up but what is this same as you can't pass on my own mind I'm not going to take that way give back that way now I'm going to go let us look also God will make a way of escape I'm going to go down the school there was no child that was a plan I'm going to call you to pass on the road unless God is in it as service stations because of petrol and a little bit of a transport that those were fully operational from the time of lockdown right up to now but most of the industries were closed now that means that if the if that happens now what are we facing we're facing job losses retrenchment we're facing uh, increase in, in, in poverty, salary cut out, UIF payout, some people have not been paid. We have also seen that people that were, were working in other provinces, they could not come home to be with their families and 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 and, 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 and they were just locked up there and uh, being alone and it was a, such a, a, a struggle. Now that also tells us that now there is a, a complete change in a family lifestyle. People now felt that they were housebound, although some people felt that they were they were they were now attracted with the people that they love and 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 they could not even visit and the results that it has been domestic violence which we see which we have which we have experienced some people have even died as a result of that and there's teenage pregnancy people falling pregnant because people are being idle, not doing anything. We also see uh, uh, substance abuse the rate increasing and all and all of those things. But on the contrary, we have also witnessed the positive things. People falling in love more with God and walking closer with God and, 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 and coming together, networking as families, learning to understand how this person is, how this one behaves, which is something has been that has been because when we rush to work to school and every other area, we hardly have time to sit together as a, as a family. Now, what I want us now to look at all of these things that I have mentioned. What does the Word of God say about all of these things? But how do these things affect us mentally and emotionally or psychologically? Because we are not just empty human beings. We are not robots. We have a mind which functions. We have a mind that responds to the situations that come across us now. Now, the psalmist here is giving us a, 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 a statement. He's in Psalm 50, verse number 15. This is what the psalmist is saying. He says, call unto me in the day of your trial. I will deliver you and you will glorify me. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Now, what do we see here? We see here two contrasting opposite emotions. The day of trouble and glorifying God. When you are in the day of trouble, what is the mood there? Sadness, obviously, because there is no way you can be happy when you are in trouble. But now, uh, glorifying God, what is the mood there? It's a jolly mood. It's an expression of happiness because something has happened that forces me to give God the glory. But how is this possible that in one verse there is a combination of two emotions that contradict each other, that work in one person, that tear a person apart? Because I promise you, a day of trouble, it doesn't matter where it comes from, uh, from the things that I have listed above, that trouble will definitely change your emotions, change your perspective, change your whole behavior because you find yourself in a state or in a condition that is not conducive, conducive to you, in a state that has disturbed your routine, your family set up. Now, the psalmist is giving us here a clear direction as to how do we get out of our predicament. He says, 
immediately you identify the things that you use call trouble, troublesome in your life. Call unto God. Report them to God. Hallelujah. Tell God about how you feel. Tell God about where you are. Present your situation to God. And he says, here is a guarantee. God, he goes on, he, he, he goes on, he gives us a bigger word here. He doesn't say God will answer you. He says God will deliver you. For every trouble that you go through, there is a deliverance. There is a rescue that God has provided. Then what are the results? What are the benefits? Then glorify God. Give God the glory. Why? Because he delivered us. He says in the day of trouble, you do not have to fight those battles. You have to hand them over to God and say, God, this is where I am. I don't know what to do with my situation. How do we balance up these two emotions so that we make the best of the promises that are in the way of God? One, the first thing that we need to do when we are facing trouble is to accept that there's a problem. Because if we don't accept that there's a problem, then it means that we are feeding the mind, we are feeding our mentality, we are feeding our thinking capacity the wrong message, which will then keep us locked in the particular uh, trouble that we are experiencing. But when we accept, like for instance, I said, say, I am infected. I must just say, I am infected. One, positive thinking, there is a healing, there's medication, I will not die. But when I don't accept it, it's denial. I'm denying, I'm denying that I am sick. I'm also pretending as if nothing. I've had so many people saying, I am fine or I will be fine. When you're not fine, when you are not fine, you should say I'm not fine because now that will communicate a message to your mental capacity that things are not okay, then they need to be fixed. But when we say something that is contrary to what is actually happening in our physical body, in our emotions, in our spirit, then it makes the body to be unable to process what is happening because the messages are in contradiction. Hallelujah. Guess what I was around? So the messages are not in, are going in the same direction so that we can get the same answer. It's just like going to the doctor and you're suffering from a toothache. You say, I have a, uh, I have trouble in my in, 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 in my head. You see, you see, now you're sending a wrong message, then you will get a wrong diagnosis. Sometimes we look at we need just to confront the devil and tell him uh, that you're not gonna get me here because God is on my side. You see, now a mentality that is defeated, it will say, Oh, I'm infected, I'm going to die. But then when it, it when it, the worst part of it is say, I'm not gonna die alone. What have I done? I'm not gonna die alone. Let me infect others so that you see that again, you see, if you look at all the things that I've said, they all work around here in the mentality. Amen. They all work in the mind. It's a difference of how we process everything in the mind. I tell you. How long you will stay in your trouble will depend on how we process things here. This is the engine of our lives. This is where decisions are made. This is where our function, our proper functioning happens. It happens here in the mind. That is why when you do everything, you must not leave your mind behind you. You must always have your mind sober at all times. Philippians 4 verse number 23 says, be renewed in the spirit of your mind. Do you know what that means? It says because of the troubles and the challenges that you go through, then you need a new mind to process this thing that has now affected you, which you did not plan for it, which you were not prepared for it, then you need to process it in a different perspective so that it does not crush you and crumble you and so that you will not be able to, 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 to rise up again. It also, I'm closing now. It also says in Romans 12, verse number 2, be transformed by the renewing of your mind so that you will be able to prove 
what is good and acceptable and really perfect from God. Hallelujah.